Howdy everyone, WABYA here. And tonight I thought we would uh, expand a little bit on our initial testing of some plastics to cover feeds and horns and things like that for our 10 gigahertz band. I did a video earlier where I tested a bunch of household plastics and while that was very very interesting and gave me an idea of what I was up against I realized that a lot of the plastics weren't very stable uh, outside especially with ultraviolet and weathering from rain and wind and things like that so what I did is I concentrated on some plastics that I knew were much more resilient to ultraviolet uh, radiation and to weathering and I kind of came up with a with a short list um, these are in no particular order but we have Teflon at the very top PTFE I was able to obtain a, a one and a half millimeter thick sample and that's that white plastic that uh, that you see right there and then we've got some Kapton film that is currently on the way and it'll be uh, a two mil sample it hasn't arrived yet we've got a PVC rigid uh, PVC sample 1 16th inch thick and that's uh, the sample right here and we also have some acrylic which is uh, commonly known as plexiglass and that's also 1 16th inch uh, thick yeah what I've done is I've cut a couple of samples here we've got some acrylic and we have also got some polycarbonate and this particular formulation is uh, known as uh, SIB R it's 1 16th inch thick also so the check marks mean these are the samples that I currently have on hand we'll go ahead and test them tonight I also got a very very interesting piece of uh, Teflon and that's uh, the sample over here and it has uh, adhesive very very thin film film of uh, adhesive on the back I did some research in into Teflon and it turns out it's very very difficult to get anything to stick to Teflon in order to do so you have to chemically treat the Teflon you actually have to alter it one of the common ways is with hydrofluoric acid and that's not something you want to mess with so companies fortunately will do that for you and in this case we've got a very very thin sample this can be more than one to two mils thick it's extremely thin and it's adhesive backed so that'll make it kind of interesting and what we're going to do is we're going to place them over the front of this horn and what we've done is 20 wavelengths away about 20 inches we've set up a female end connector there we've got a small e-field probe uh, sticking out of it and this setup will not be changed in any way we're not going to go near it or any of the cables the way you see the cables here are exactly the way they're going to remain for the duration of all the tests because what happens is just my presence near the uh, field the, uh, the RF field generated by this uh, and transmit antenna here just my presence uh, within a, a foot or two will cause the receive signal we're using the spectrum analyzer as a detector I'm also telling the spectrum analyzer to go ahead and give me 50 averages and that will help me at deriving a number for the insertion loss and just me moving around and me being uh, a foot or two away is enough to cause variations in that reading so what I'm going to do is once I I'm going to use some hot glue to paste the plastic flat up against the face of this transmit antenna there'll be no adhesive inside the horn whatsoever all the hot glue will just be a small bead on the outside just to hold it flat and the idea is for it to just hold it in place long enough for me to grab a measurement um, along with the averaging I figure since each sweep is about five milliseconds we're doing 50 sweeps that's about a quarter second um, we'll obtain I'm, I'm pretty sure the setup is stable enough uh, for me to get a, a reading within one quarter second 
I know that the signal generator that I'll be using, the, uh, the HP uh, 8673D, uh, does vary up and down in, in amplitude a little bit, but within a quarter, any particular uh, quarter second interval, it'll be stable enough. So that's what we're going to be using, and we're feeding it with zero dBm signal. These are not phase stable cables, but again, we're not going to be moving them in the slightest bit, especially uh, between measurements. So we're going to put the plastic on, get a reading, take the plastic off, get another reading. The difference between them will give us a rough idea of this insertion loss. Also, what we're going to do after we get an idea of the insertion loss, we're going to go ahead and measure the return loss of the transmit antenna using the Sagilinta directional coupler. This is the 87300C. It's rated from 1 to 26 gig. It's a, a 10 dB directional coupler. We also have a, um, a 20 dB coupler there, uh, a microwave uh, uh, directional coupler with 20 dB coupling. So we'll use uh, one of two couplers there to measure the return loss of this horn antenna that we're using as a transmit antenna. It'll be interesting to see what effects the plastic has to the return loss. So that's the setup and let's go ahead and I'll turn the video off and start collecting some data and then uh, within the next day or so as more samples arrive we'll uh, test some epoxy, some common G10, FR4 type of fiberglass, well, basically printed circuit board without the copper. It'll be 1.2 millimeters thick. We also have some more acrylic plexiglass. Um, this uh, time it'll be a 1.5 millimeter thickness, so it'll be a thinner sample. It'll be interesting. And then we've got some Kapton on the way, which I'm very interested in seeing how it uh, performs. So these are the plastics that I've selected for evaluation because they should be fairly resilient to ultraviolet. So let's get on with the testing. There is one other thing I forgot to mention. The way I'm going to do this is once I apply the plastic to the front of the horn and apply just a little dab of hot glue to the back side to hold it in place, what I'm going to physically do is absolutely nothing will get touched or disturbed on my little bench here and I physically will be moving back about uh, six or seven feet away from the setup. And what I found is that completely stabilizes the setup. I can move my arms around, I can stand up and down, and it will not affect the readings that we see here. Um, as I move closer and closer and get uh, closer to the fields, especially from the transmit antenna over to the receive probe here, as we get closer, my body or any objects, uh, doesn't matter if they're wood, plastics, chairs, anything like that, that'll affect the readings that we see. So nothing will get altered or disturbed in any way. I'm simply going to step back six or seven feet and obtain, take a look at the reading, document it, walk up, peel off the plastic without touching anything. None of these wires will be touched. Um, the bench here will be cleared of debris and I'll grab another reading uh, with as uh, little disruption as possible. So hopefully we'll get some stable results. Alright, so we've collected our insertion loss data for all the different plastic samples that we have. Unfortunately I didn't have the epoxy uh, FR4 fiberglass sample to test but uh, all the other plastics came in and we've got data for them. So now the last part will be to measure the effects of the plastic when it's put over the horn antenna. We're going to be measuring the return loss. So what we're going to do is we're going to be using directional coupler. Coming off the signal generator, we've got a uh, 10 dB microwave attenuator coming into our directional coupler. This is a uh, Midwest microwave. Uh, it's a 20 dB coupler. Uh, spec from 7 gig to 12.4 gig. It's a model 5014-20-008 and it's really convenient for this test because of the type of uh, fittings that it has. It uses uh, male fittings, makes it very very convenient to uh, put onto the uh, attenuator and things like that. So I've got it set up right now. We're going to be collecting our reference point. Uh, as you know, um, we're going to be putting 
plus 10 dBm uh, into the attenuator. Coming out of the attenuator should be close to 0 dBm into the, uh, to the output side of the directional coupler. And with the input side open like this, it should represent 0 dB return loss. Uh, theoretically, all of the RF should be reflected from this uh, open point right here. And of course the 20 dB sample point will be going to our spectrum analyzer. So what we'll do is we'll, I've got it set for 50 averages, we'll obtain a reference level right here, and then we'll go ahead and put on our plastic sample. The horn is positioned at an angle and it'll be pointing up at the ceiling. It's uh, hitting a point about eight feet away at about a 45 degree angle. So um, I think our uh, we don't have to worry about uh, any reflections, especially with me not moving around, things like that. We should obtain some pretty stable results. So that's going to be the setup for return loss measurements. And again, we're not so much interested in absolute accuracy. Uh, we're interested in the difference between the two readings we obtain with and without the plastic over the feed here. So let's get started and we'll see what we get. All right, so I actually didn't do a very good job of explaining the setup. I realized my error in describing it. What we've got is, this is going to be our reference setup. We're now actually measuring return loss, and that's going to be our reference level. Reference is going to be with the horn, with no plastic on it. If we wanted the absolute level of the return loss of the horn right now, we would, of course, disconnect this coax, get our reading that I showed earlier on the spectrum analyzer, and take the difference between these two readings right now, and that'd be the return loss of the horn. But what we care about is the difference between the return loss of this horn with and without the plastic. So this is our setup here that's going to be our reference. And so I'll go ahead and document this value right here. Seems to be averaging about minus 29.2 and I'll start uh, adding the different plastics and we'll note uh, what kind of difference we see. All right, so the results are in. Let's go over them very quickly. So one thing I want to point out is that the measurements that I took here, I saw fluctuations just sitting there doing nothing. It was very, very easy to see plus or minus 0 0.05 dB uh, going up and down all by itself. So what that means is don't I wouldn't put a lot of trust in this very very last digit out here. Um, this could be 0 0.10 or it could be 0 0.15 or you know it, it could uh, even be 0 0.20. So don't put a lot of trust in that last last digit. But here's what we saw. Let's start out first with a really thick Teflon. This is one and a half millimeters. What we noticed is an insertion loss of about 0.15 dB. That was very, very respectable. Next was some Kapton 2 mils. And first time I took measurements, uh, clearly my data was garbage because it showed a higher level with the, uh, with the uh, plastic on than with it off. So we retook the uh, data from scratch and this time we got 0.24 dB. That tells me that for the Kapton the, the real insertion loss is probably something less than 0.24 dB so very very respectable. PVC plastic rigid 1 16th inch thick insertion loss 0.34 dB starting to go up there. Uh, acrylic plexiglass 1 16th inch thick 0.09 dB very respectable number polycarbonate 1 16th inch thick 0.04 dB very very nice number uh, this sample did not come in but it's just another acrylic plexiglass so since we had a sample up here I'm not too worried about it kind of wish I had some blank FR4 available but we didn't have data for that and the last one is some very very thin Teflon this stuff comes with an adhesive back very very cool stuff I'm guessing it's about four mils thick and it was very, very good, 0.08 dB insertion loss. So looking at these numbers, they're all pretty respectable, but the surprise is that uh, where everybody thinks PVC, 
it's a no-brainer you know they put it in the microwave and at 2 gig it didn't get warm but here it's actually measuring one of the highest insertion losses out of all the plastics that we tested it's not a huge amount but it is higher than the rest of them so take it for what it's worth so as far as insertion loss you know I really like the cap done I've got a lot of it and it's pretty tough stuff it holds up really good to ultraviolet and it's got a very very good uh, loss number it's going to be about two tenths of a db or less insertion loss that's something I can live with especially considering what happened when we measured the uh, return loss with and without the plastic on the horn antenna so these results were a lot more stable what we did is uh, we measured the cap on the PVC acrylic polycarbonate and the Teflon with uh, adhesive and just for the heck of it because I had them handy from a previous test is I had some styrofoam sheet a very thin sheet some milk jug plastic a CD case which I think is just you know, plexiglass or polycarbonate one of the two uh, coffee uh, lid you know Maxwell house lid and uh, we have uh, some plastic some kind of high density like polyethylene or something that came off of a, a fiber container and uh, so just for the heck of it we measured um, what the return loss of the horn was with and without these plastics put on top so first of all let's go back to the plastics that we do uh, have uh, insertion loss numbers for on, on this evaluation this Teflon is one and a half millimeters thick it's a very very thick sheet of Teflon and what we noticed is uh, a difference in the return loss of 3.9 dB I thought that was kind of significant uh, I thought that was pretty high so if you've got a, a feed that has a so-so SWR well, you know your return loss possibly just got worse by 4 dB so that may or may not be a factor for you to consider the captain had uh, half a DB difference in the return loss. I thought that was pretty outstanding. Next one was the PVC. Look at that. 6.37, almost 6.4 DB difference in the return loss. So, from my testing here, the PVC is a clear loser, not only from the insertion loss test that we did up higher above, but from the return loss measurements. The acrylic sheet we noticed a return loss difference of just shy of 5 dB also not too impressive the polycarbonate 6 dB almost 6 dB difference in the return loss pretty surprising and these results um, I, I duplicated I, I did the collected my data twice and they were very very stable um, this time uh, they, they weren't fluctuating at all here because it's a different type of setup you know we're using hard coax um, to the setup so there's really no variation that's going to occur whereas with the insertion loss test we're, we're doing free air measurements so um, and then the, uh, the Teflon with the adhesive it's a very very thin uh, Teflon we noticed a very small 0.62 dB of, um, of return loss difference so a very respectable number the problem is this stuff is really really thin and the ad adhesive is not overly sticky um, it is possible I could probably put this over the feed and then probably put some hot glue around the edge to hold this in place but you know what it, it tends to want to curl and it's not the easiest stuff to work with so I'm gonna go with um, the captain which uh, likes to stay flat we'll uh, we'll actually epoxy it over the feed and then I'm gonna put a small bead of hot glue around the perimeter from the outside and that should pretty much uh, hold it on there all the time so there you go I'll go ahead and uh, post this video and hopefully it'll be of some value to uh, somebody else who is curious of what the insertion loss and return loss measurements uh, of different plastics over the feed what kind of effects they they have so 73 we'll see you guys later